Hi guys, Olive here. In today's nonfiction November video, I would like to make some predictions about what nonfiction books I think will end up being five star reads for me. This was a video that was originally done, I believe, by either Mercedes over at Mercy's Bookish Musings or Lala at Books and Lala. I'm not entirely sure who did it first. I've seen it attributed to both of them, but in both of their videos, they made predictions about what fiction books they thought would be five star reads. I wanted to do my own version as everyone else was doing at the time. It became kind of a tag of sorts, but there was just one big problem. I am awful at picking fiction books for myself. I have actually lost count of how many times I have been let down by a book that I thought I was going to love, but I have a much better success rate when it comes to my beloved nonfiction. So I combed through my TBR while considering my interests and considering what books are currently on my favorite nonfiction books list and picked out 10 different nonfiction books that I think have a high probability of being five star reads. So without any further ado, let's talk about the 10 books that I think I'm going to love. The first of those being Buzz, The Nature and Necessity of Bees by Thor Hansen. Earlier this year, I read and really loved an earlier book of Thor Hansen's called Feathers, The Evolution of a Natural Miracle. I ironically was reading it at the exact same time that this book was released. As soon as I finished Feathers, I immediately knew that I needed to read this one. As you may suppose, this one is all about bees, their evolution, the different varieties of them, and how they are, often invisibly so, central to our lives and to our mythologies. I love this author's style of making a story out of fact telling. He also has a fantastic sense of humor. I'm really excited to pick this one up. My next five star prediction is Stiff by Mary Roach. I have only recently started getting into very popular nonfiction writer Mary Roach, and it is inevitable in any video that I mention her name at all that someone in my comment section is telling me how much they love this book. I'm getting the impression that this may be her most loved book. This book is the account of what happens to our bodies post-mortem, specifically what happens to our bodies if they are donated to science. Earlier this year, I read and really loved Mortician Caitlin Doty's memoir, Smoke It's In Your Eyes. I really enjoyed how openly discussing death can give you a whole new perspective on life. So I have really high hopes for this one. And speaking of books that can give you a whole different perspective on life, I also predict I will love When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. This is Kalanithi's memoir about how he, a 36-year-old neurosurgeon, was diagnosed with terminal stage four lung cancer. He was once someone who treated the sick. This book is about his flip to being a patient and how he approached life knowing that it was very shortly drawing to a close. This book is very frequently compared to one of my current all-time favorite nonfiction books being Mortal by Atul Gawande, since they both discuss life in the face of death. But I get the impression that this one will be much more personal. You can't really get any more deep and personal than someone talking about their own approaching death. I anticipate that this one will destroy me, but it is one that I have heard so many people say is amazing to read. My next five star prediction is The Personality Brokers, The Strange History of Myers-Briggs and the Birth of Personality Testing by Merv Emery. This is one that was just released back in September that I was very kindly sent by my good friend Steve Donahue. I laughed out loud when this one arrived in the mail from Steve because this one is so up my alley, it's not even funny. I, like many people, am fascinated by personality tests and I am particularly intrigued by the world's most famous one, Myers-Briggs. It began as a homegrown multiple choice assessment in the 1920s, but has exploded into a phenomenon that is now found in big corporations and universities and the military. I know that some people consider Myers-Briggs to be malarkey or even may equate it to astrology, but although it's difficult to prove its validity, I personally have never felt better understood than when I first read the description of an INTJ. The comfort of feeling like, oh, hey, maybe I'm not defective. Maybe I just have an atypical personality type changed my life. So I can't wait to learn more about Myers-Briggs. I feel like the most effective way to successfully pick a five-star prediction for yourself is to know yourself and to know your own taste. And if you, dear viewer, have been around to book Olive Land for any length of time, you likely know how in love with birds I am. So my next selection should come as no surprise. 
That is The Raven Master, My Life with Ravens at the Tower of London by Christopher Scaife. My attention was first brought to this book by my good friend Sabrina over at Steakachino. I personally did not know there was still a Raven Master at the Tower of London, nor did I know he had such a dope Instagram. Corvids are the most intelligent and in my opinion most fascinating type of birds, and this is Scaife's memoir of caring for them and is also an examination of the birds themselves and also a study of the lore that surrounds their existence at the Tower of London. This seems like a blend of factual and fun, which is the best type of nonfiction for me. I will say that I find a lot of good new nonfiction releases to add to my TBR from Steve Donahue's Mail Halls. One that I discovered that way that I really think I'm going to end up loving is The Secret Life of Cows by Rosamond Young. This is an exploration of the inner lives of cows. Most people reduce cows to a mindless pack destined for human consumption in one way or another. But in reality, cows are bright, energetic individuals, each with a personality all their own. What I think will make this book really special is that it was written by an organic farmer with a wealth of experience in observing and interacting with these animals. I don't talk about my upbringing very much on this channel for a variety of reasons, the main one being privacy reasons, but I will say that for a very short time in my childhood, I lived on a small farm. And while I lived there, I had the privilege of interacting with the resident cows. I think they are beautiful, wonderful creatures, and I cannot wait to read this book. My next five-star nonfiction prediction is a memoir that is called Hammerhead, The Making of a Carpenter by Nina McLaughlin. My ears perked up when I heard new booktuber Kazen over at Always Doing, who has a fantastic channel, by the way, you should go check it out. She discussed this book on her channel. As I said, this is a memoir in which McLaughlin chronicles her journey from quitting her desk job to accepting a job as an apprentice to a carpenter despite not knowing anything about being handy when applying. From the sounds of it, it seems like this book will contain not just a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, but will also say a lot about passion and finding meaning in what you do. I think I'm going to find this one very satisfying. The next piece of nonfiction that I think I'm going to just adore is Fox's Unearthed, A Story of Love and Loathing in Modern Britain by Lucy Jones. This is one I heard about from Natalie, formerly of We Need Honey, who has recently changed her channel name to Curious Reader, which I think fits her style perfectly. This is a study of foxes and the very complex relationship they have with humans, particularly in Britain. Foxes are comfortably familiar figures in the countryside, but are simultaneously seen as bothersome pests. Ever since I first heard Natalie talk about this one, I got the feeling that it was going to be a touching read in the same vein as The Soul of an Octopus, another one of my very favorite nonfiction books. I have been searching for a book like that since 2016, so I'm really hoping this will be it. On a darker note, another book I predict will end up being a five-star read for me is Gulag by Anne Applebaum. This is a huge and meticulously researched work that gives the first fully documented portrait of the Gulag, which was a vast collection of Soviet prison camps. The book illustrates what life was like for prisoners, but also discusses the Gulag in the grander context of Soviet history. I did study the Gulag during college and have gone on to read more about the Gulag in my further readings on Russian history, but I do think it's always important to learn more. I know this one will not be an easy read, but I am positive that I will find it to be an extremely well done book. And while most of the books on this list have been published in more recent years, the final one on the list is an older one. That is Owl by William Service. This is a tiny little book about how the author and his family take in an abandoned baby owl. From what I hear, this one is very heartfelt and extremely funny. It's full of love and mischievous owl hijinks. This is yet another recommendation for my friend and Steve Donahue, who has gone on to assure me that this will be a new favorite of mine. How do you argue with that? On to the five-star prediction list it goes. So those were my 10 five-star nonfiction predictions. I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. Have you read any of these? If you have, please let me know how you think my predictions are going to pan out. Once I have read some or hopefully all of these, I am hoping to do a check-in video, so keep an eye out for that. If you have any other comments or questions, those can also go in the comment section below. But if you would like to chat with me somewhere other than YouTube, I am on a variety of different places on social media. The links to all of my profiles are linked in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.